Hi, welcome to another episode of How It Works, and today we're going to see how Klarna, the European financial services giant, uh, built uh, a state-of-the-art customer support or customer service uh, chatbot, and I was able to automate almost 700 full-time agents' jobs, and eventually saved almost 40 million dollars per year. So we're going to see how they did it, uh, and what could have been the architecture. At Lizer, we did try building one, and we got pretty close. Uh, so we thought we'll probably bring, share what our learnings are. Now, my name is Siva, founder of Lizer, uh, the simplest agent framework in the market today to help uh, uh, you build uh, AI agents and deploy them in a secure and private manner on within your uh, cloud. So the best part of data remains in your cloud with Lizer. Coming back to what Klarna did, this is probably the first uh, most uh, uh, impressive use case uh, that came out, uh, which kind of shows what generative AI as a technology could do to business. So Klarna built a customer service assistant, which was able to handle about 2.3 million conversation on just in one month. And this is almost two thirds of uh, the overall customer interactions that their uh, help desk had. Uh, it was the assistant was doing uh, the equivalent work of almost 700 full-time agents um, and it was able to uh, kind of resolve the errands which normally took 11 minutes it was able to do that in under two minutes without any drop of the csat score the customer satisfaction score which means customers could not figure out what klarna i mean which which was the bot and which was the agent apparently and uh, the bot was available uh, in 23 markets uh, and communicates uh, in about 35 languages and uh, Klarna uh, declared that there will be an estimated savings of close to 40 million dollars now this chatbot is not the plain vanilla chatbot if you want to try how a vanilla default chatbot would work try chatagent.lizer.ai We've built a demo app for all of you to try, go and try, and you will know that it is good, but there is a huge difference. The architecture changes. And that's what we're going to see now, how the architecture changes. So it starts here, right? Um, when the user asks a query, the query is first intercepted by a function, which tries to understand whether is there any metadata about the user that is present in that query. If yes, it will actually push it to a database which manages the user profile just from a metadata standpoint. The user, it manages the user profile. And uh, the query further is passed on to the chat agent. Now, there are two ways to handle chat agent. One is adopt Lizer's uh, pre-built agent SDK or use one of the agent frameworks like Langchain or Llama Index where you write multiple functions and string them together to build an agent like this. So the choice is yours. It's two minutes versus 20 hours, but that's how the whole thing works. Now, what happens here is um, the query that the user asks is passed to the agent uh, SDK along with the user profile. And this is where now the whole complexity goes up. So there is a concept called long-term memory. Long-term memory is nothing but it stores all the history of conversations that you you would have had with the chat and it is summarized and it's stored as a summarized uh, version of all the previous conversations that you had that's long-term memory short-term memory is memory that happens within that particular session so all the imagine if you ask 10 questions when you after logging in during those like few minutes that is the short-term memory so during the very first and then there is concept called the example data set wherein um, there is a set of few question answer set which kind of gives the bot an idea that hey you know what this is the style that the user likes on day one there will be a de facto style but with the feedback coming in the style will be more tuned towards how the user prefers to uh, get the output so I'll come to, the, come to that later so let us start with the very first step during the very first query this the user query is passed along with the user profile database, along with the QA dataset example, 
and the long-term memory. So four data points merge together and hits the LLM during the very first query that the user uh, initiates. So the LLM understands, okay, this is the history which comes from long-term memory. This is the user preference in terms of how to answer that comes from the Q&A data set. And this is the user's profile, so it knows users what the user profile is. And finally, this is the user query that the user is currently asking. So all this is fed to LLM in one shot. So LLM goes through like a GPT-4 or a cloud, goes through all of this so that it can respond back. Now that is the first query. When it comes to the second query, the workflow changes. When I ask a follow-up question, for example, that question is again attached with a short-term memory and a user profile database and the QA data set. So instead of long-term memory, you know, the short-term memory kicks in because what happens after the very first question or very first interaction, our short-term memory has the long-term memory context because we already passed it in the previous question. So the long-term memory is replaced by the short-term memory and then that hits the LLM, so LLM could respond. And all the subsequent questions are again stored in the short-term memory. So the whole short-term memory is passed for each and every question that you ask. And that is how LLMs are able to keep track of what you're asking because LLMs are stateless by nature, in nature. So that is how the short-term memory concept works. And finally, the RLHF, the reinforced learning human feedback. So all the chat inputs or all the chat output that happens as a user, if I like few of the chat outputs, they kind of, they are passed back to the training data set. It'll go and replace an older data set. And uh, that's where the reward function comes into picture. So the similar, the better uh, examples that I start uh, uh, upvoting or uh, giving a positive feedback, they kind of go and sit on top and they start replacing the QA and a data set uh, so that uh, the engine understands what my preferences are. So with Lyser, what happens? The Lyser SDK has long-term memory, short-term memory, all the LLM interactions, all the I mean, RLHF and all the other aspects that happen within a chat agent built in. I'm talking about uh, parsing, chunking, vector storage, retrieval, query, re I mean, query transformation, re-ranking. So all of that are multiple building blocks that are all built in within the SDK. There is another session where I covered how Lyser SDK chat bot works. You can also visit Lyser.ai and in the very home page, landing page, we have kind of put in the architecture of how Lyser is able to simplify the whole uh, chat uh, or the RAG uh, pipeline. But that is how Lyser SDK works and come, it comes uh, built in with all these features. And, uh, and again, if as a customer, if you're planning to build a really advanced customer service chatbot, I would say this is the starting point. This is not the end point. This is the starting point. I'm pretty sure Klarna is doing tons of other things and all of us could only do that by learning over experience because your customers would be of different nature. You would need a slightly different type of chatbot uh, and uh, error corrections. So that can only happen over a period of time. But this is definitely a very good starting point. So hope this architecture was helpful. If you want to implement something similar to this, reach out to us. We are here to help you and get started. And uh, that's pretty much for today's uh, uh, How It Works session. I'll come back to you with another uh, topic uh, which I might find interesting and which you may also find interesting.